what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a thriller film, Fermat's Room. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with an attractive man explaining the Goldbach conjecture to some women. He explains that the Goldbach conjecture is one of the oldest unsolved problems in the history of mathematics. Then the fan interrupts his discussion, asking for an autograph, and the fan says good luck to the man. The listeners then ask what good luck is all about, so the man informs them that he will be presenting his demonstration on the Goldbach conjecture. Suddenly, another man shouts to the attractive man from a building screaming to hurry up. The attractive man then worriedly runs inside the building and finds his room in a mess, and he then sees that his presentation is all gone. The man looks at the scatter, and he acts frustrated about redoing his presentation. Subsequently, the scene transitions into an old man playing chess with a friend. The old man shares a letter he received from a stranger named Fermat. The letter contains an invitation to gather the country's best mathematicians. But there is a catch. He first needs to solve the mathematical puzzle written in the invitation within 10 days. Thereupon, 10 days later, another bearded man is in a library, struggling to solve the same mathematical puzzle. The librarian bids goodbye and reminds him to alphabetically put the books on their shelves. The bearded man looks at the problem and realizes that he needs to solve it alphabetically. The bearded man laughs in joy because he finally solves the puzzle. Following that, the participants receive another letter from Fermat. It says that only four people managed to solve the mathematical puzzle, and for that, they are officially invited to solve the greatest mathematical enigma in their country. The letter also contains instructions about the meeting place, restricting cellular phones, and their alias named after Nonak admissions. After that, four different people meet each other at a riverbank, with their nicknames tagged on their clothes. Pascal for the bearded man, Galois for the attractive young man, Hilbert for the old bloke, and Oliva for the only woman. At dusk, a car from the far side of the river flashes its headlights to the participants. Using a boat, they find at the river bank, the four crosses to the other side. After paddling to the other side, they see the car empty and a personal digital assistant with GPS connected to the car's system. The four get into the car. Using the GPS, they arrive at an abandoned warehouse in the countryside, where they get inside an elegant room. The participants wander the room when suddenly Galwa informs everyone that he investigated their host, Fermat. Galwa shares that he deceived the post office to know the real name of Fermat, and when he searched the name on the internet, not any single information was up. While the others are mocking Galwa, an old man suddenly comes into the room and introduces himself as Fermat. The players immediately try to socialize with Fermat, but Fermat offers them food first. They discuss academia, mathematics, puzzles, and riddles at the dinner table. After dinner, Hilbert goes outside to wash his hands, while the players excitedly wait for Fermat to share more information about the greatest enigma. But then, Fermat receives a phone call from a hospital, and because of the poor signal, he cannot completely understand it. Fermat informs everyone that his daughter is in a coma and needs to check on her. Fermat bids goodbye and drives away, but he forgets his coat. Pascal tries to chase Fermat, but Fermat is in a hurry. Suddenly, a wallet drops from the jacket, so Pascal picks it up and opens it, revealing a photograph of a young woman. Meanwhile, Hilbert has just finished washing his hands, and comes into the room to see Oliva and Galwa Tom massaging each other. Hilbert quickly hides and waits for a few seconds before getting back into the room. Seconds later, Pascal comes in holding Fermat's jacket, and he is somehow dumbfounded. Galwa quickly searches the coat and the wallet, only revealing Fermat's real name, Roman. Suddenly, the phone chimes, displaying a mathematical puzzle with a time limit of one minute. While Pascal examines the walls, Oliva, Hilbert, and Galwa work on the problem. Not long after, Pascal interrupts the three and informs them that it is a cliché problem. Pascal explains the solution, but they fail to solve it on time. After that, Pascal tells everyone that the room is shrinking and blocks the door. For every second they exceed, the room will continue to shrink. Another problem pops up, so Galwa quickly tries to solve it. Meanwhile, Hilbert finds paperwork about their host buying four hydraulic presses. After a while, Pascal examines the document and informs everyone that their host is committing a crime. A cell phone is attached to the presses behind the walls, and it will start the machine to press every time they exceed the time limit. The three try to stop the walls from moving, but they fail miserably, because the presses are so powerful. Gallo returns on solving the problem, while Pascal confesses a revelation. Pascal shares that he accidentally hit and ran Fermat's daughter a month ago, and now Fermat is taking his revenge. Galwa finally solves the problem, and just seconds after that, another puzzle comes up. Oliva and Hilbert focus on the problem, and the room starts to shrink again. So Oliva calls the other men and instructs them to help her solve. Suddenly, the light from one corner breaks because of the press, so the three men quickly save the remaining lights while Oliva solves the puzzle. 
After a few seconds, Elida finally cracks it, and the room stops shrinking. On the other hand, Fermat notices that he left his jacket. Back in the room, the players reveal information about themselves, hoping to find a connection and answer why Fermat chose them. Pascal catches the attention of everyone, and he informs them that the academicians from their alias died at the same age they are now. The cell phone chimes again and another puzzle comes up. This problem gives them two minutes to solve. However, the men are still focused on stopping the presses. Oliva solves the problem, while the three men lie on the bookshelves on the ground. Then again, another enigma pops up. However, Gala quickly answers it, and he instructs Oliva to help them before sending the answer, because they need more time to put all the shelves on the floor. They place bottles of alcohol in the spaces of the shelves to make sure there are no gaps and all are intact. They manage to finish the task before the room moves, but the presses are too strong, and it breaks the furniture. Galo tosses the table on top of the shelves and instructs everyone to get on it, thinking it might add on the pressure, but it only hurts them. Pascal commands Oliva to answer the phone, but the cell phone is on the table that Galo tossed. The four quickly search for the cell phone, while the room continues to shrink. Unexpectedly, Galo finds Fermat's invitation to the Enigma, causing the players to ask why the host would invite himself to his play. Oliva reads the letter while the men continue to search for the cell phone. It turns out the Fermat they met before was just another player in the game, and that the true Fermat who invited them is still unknown. The actual host only instructs the fake Fermat to introduce himself as Fermat, but he has no idea that the host used him to deceive the other players. Finally, Hilbert finds the cell phone, so he quickly answers it, and the room stops shrinking. Meanwhile, the fake Fermat angrily argues with the hospital staff about the phone call he received. However, the personnel informs the fake Fermat that the hospital did not call him. The nurse asks for the fake Fermat's cell phone, and the call log displays a private number. The personnel then inform the fake Fermat that the computer displays their number whenever they make calls. The nurse calmly tells the fake Fermat that his daughter is stable and that the hospital did not call him. The fake Fermat excuses himself and leaves, while the nurse and staff look at him in empathy. Back at the players, Oliva thinks the real Fermat is the same person who destroyed Galwa's presentation, but Galwa thinks who destroyed it was just some random kid. However, Oliva insists on her idea that no kid would just go in a Galwa room to destroy his demonstration. Hilbert realizes that Oliva knew Galwa because Galwa never shared where it happened. Cornered, Oliva confesses that she and Galwa used to date until Galwa accused her of cheating on him. Oliva thinks that the invitation was from Galois, but Galois asked Oliva to pretend they did not know each other when she called him. Pascal interrupts them, and he reads another puzzle from the phone. So the three players stop talking and they help Pascal. Unfortunately, the time runs out before they solve the problem. So the walls start to move again, but the players remain focused. And just seconds later, they solve the puzzle. Pascal then brings up the broken relationship between Oliva and Galois. At the same time, the cell phone chimes again, giving them another mystery to solve. Hilbert takes the cell phone while Pascal listens to Oliva explaining her side of the story. Oliva used the internet to play a game of chess, but when one player managed to defeat her at the game, Oliva's curiosity turned into interest. One day, the mysterious player invited Oliva to a gathering of important people on a boat. At first, Oliva wondered why the party was on a ship, but when she got there, it finally made sense. Illegal things happened at that party, and it made Oliva addicted to that kind of freedom. That is why she came back every time. Oliva cries as she looks at the teary-eyed Galwa. Pascal then thinks that maybe the guy Oliva met, planned and organized everything. But Oliva denies it because the guy is in the room with them. Pascal quickly looks to Hilbert, who acts like he did not hear everything, while Galwa clenches his jaw and fist. Galwa faces Hilbert and taps his hand. Galwa tries to break the cell phone while Oliva cries silently. Pascal screams at Galwa because they will die without the phone. However, Galwa does not care anymore if he dies. This raises suspicions to Galwa because Pascal realizes that everything that happened is too interesting for the mastermind to miss it. Suddenly, the walls start to move again as Pascal explains that Galwa broke the cell phone on purpose. But then, Pascal retracts his words when he realizes something. After their dinner, Fermat would have to leave the room to take the phone call, but Fermat did not. The person who made the phone call was behind everything, and Galwa could not make the phone call as he sat in front of Pascal. Hilbert was the only one who was not in the room during the phone call. Surprisingly, Hilbert calmly admits that he is the real Fermat. Pascal then sees Hilbert's suitcase and realizes that Hilbert is the one who sent the letters to them. Oliva quickly instructs Pascal to call the fake Fermat for help, but Hilbert informs them that the fake Fermat is dead. Meanwhile, a police officer stops the fake Fermat for inattentive driving when he tries to answer his phone. The fake Fermat begs the police officer to come with him to return to the abandoned warehouse, where the fake Fermat left his belongings. 
Back in the room, Hilbert confesses the real reason why he did it all. Hilbert spent decades trying to prove the Goldbach conjecture, and it all went to waste when he saw an article in a magazine containing news that Galois, a bachelor, solved the Goldbach conjecture before him. Hilbert planned to kill himself, but he considered meeting Galois. Then Hilbert read that Galois' presentation was sabotaged. So Hilbert sent an email to Galois, but Oliva answered it unexpectedly. Oliva confirmed to Hilbert that Galois had to redo everything, so Hilbert continued his work. Then Hilbert gives his paperwork to Galois, to which Galois admitted that Hilbert's work is brilliant. Hilbert set up the room to test Galois' intelligence, and Pascal was just a pawn to make the police believe that the fake Fermat took his revenge on Pascal. Hilbert then adds that when he went out after their dinner to call the fake Fermat, he also put poison in the clasp of the fake Fermat's safety belt. When it hailed, the poison would cause asphyxia in less than two minutes, which will lead to an accident, so nobody will notice the poison. At that same time, the fake Fermat finally uses his seatbelt because of the police officer. Not long after, the fake Fermat's car drives into a cliff. Suddenly, Gallo reveals unexpected information to the others. Galois never resolved the Goldbach conjecture, and he just lied to get Oliva's attention. The lie got bigger, gaining attention from the media, so Galois destroyed his own presentation and lied to the press about it. With that, Hilbert realizes that he is the only one who resolved the Goldbach conjecture. All of a sudden, Galois angrily charges to Hilbert, knocking Hilbert unconscious. Pascal stops Galois and raises that, unlike their alias, the real Hilbert died in his 80s. The three look around and notice the word Libertad on the blackboard. They immediately break the blackboard and it reveals an escape panel. Oliva is the first one to go to the escape panel and Galwa follows her, but Galwa takes Hilbert's paperwork on Goldbachy's conjecture. Pascal almost gets trapped in the room because of his pants, but he manages to escape just in time before the presses kill him. The film ends with Galwa contemplating whether to publish Hilbert's work under Hilbert or his name. So Pascal takes Hilbert's work off Galway's hands and tosses it on the river, remarking that the world stays the same with or without the answer to the Goldbach conjecture. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.